Hello, this is First Fire Non-Assault Move. Welcome back to the sixth video in the War in the East series. Let's pick right up where we left off. I conducted air recon, and it continues to show a whole lot of Soviets starting to form a defensive line along the rivers, right in Army Group Center's area of operations, and they continued to build up massively around Leningrad. Didn't pick up any any formations in here, uh, and I think they just uh, abandoned this part of uh, Army Group Norse area. So I think we'll be able to just move up in there and take Talon in. I bet that's uh, not even occupied. The Russians are content to shorten their lines and start a defense in depth in this area. So while we have an army group north here, let's talk a little bit about them. The objectives are going to be take Riga. It's empty. That'll be um, pretty easy. 56 Panzer Corps. I've, I've decided to have them refit because they're not going to accomplish very much on their own. Uh, they're very isolated against all of this. They need the infantry to catch up, which they are going to do. They're going to refit. I have them right here as refit on. You can either do them individually or you can do it at the core level, which will have all the divisions underneath the core start to refit. So we're going to see how that affects um, their supply situation. They're not too bad, 81, 95, 151, tons of ammunition, because they haven't really done any fighting. Tons of ammunition, just a lot of moving, 81%, uh, it's not too bad. Supplies, 94%. So we'll try to remember these figures and see if how much they improve when they're refitting. I was reading, up, reading back up on the rules on refit. So they're going to get... Uh, priority for replacements and also damaged vehicles coming back to the front. I was looking really closely to find about how it affects uh, their fuel situation, but since they're not going to be moving, they're going to get their normal logistics phase to have supply sent out to them. So they're definitely going to get more fuel, but refitting, I'm wondering, I'm not really clear if having them refit emphasizes getting more fuel out to them but we'll figure that out so the objective is Riga start to bring up our infantry to support the 56 Panzer Corps uh, I don't believe we'll make any contact with these Soviets here uh, oh and I'll step back a second Oh, um, I first want to thank Steve. He's my very first subscriber and, and commenter on my channel, and it was awesome to see that. And he pointed out some uh, important things. I was behind a little bit, shuttling my my air force, the Luftwaffe, into better position to support the ground forces. So you'll see that there's not much back here. This is all cluttered with um, air formations and their headquarters. So we move them up behind our front, a very fluid front, but they're going to be in better position, if not this turn, because they moved uh, next, the proceedings turns to, to help out the fight. So that took a while, a bit of nug work. And yeah, Steve also pointed out that if I had, I guess, been a little more aggressive, I might have might have had a greater encirclement here outside of Minsk, maybe closing the pocket about 20 or 30. I think he said around 40, 40 miles west of Minsk. Uh, a little more, moved with a little more alacrity, but I did take away a Panzer Corps from Army Group North, so maybe that contributed to not uh, encircling as many formations of the Soviets as, as as I could have. All right, so that's Army Group North. Oh, uh, looking ahead to the end of 1941, quickly point out 
that my plan originally my first video that I would have liked I would have been happy to have a defense along the Luga here because I wasn't going to make any effort to take Leningrad uh, you know if it opportunity was there of course we'd we'd march on Leningrad but it was wasn't Army Group Norse objective so I was hoping I'd get at least this far and have the center of gravity for uh, a defensive line on Novogra Novgorod but I don't think that's gonna happen best case I think we'll be able to take Peskov it's gonna be a, a quite a fight to do that as you can see they're going to be continuing continually reinforcing this front here so hopefully by the 19th and uh, when the winter starts to approach 1941 early 1942 We'll have a solid line centered on Piskov. All right, let's move down to Army Group Center. Army Group Center's objectives are going to be limited this turn. I am going to see how some of my attacks turn out before I decide to wholesale start to refit uh, my Panzer Divisions. 38 fuel. 24 fuel, 37 fuel, 31 fuel, 24 fuel, 28 fuel, 21 fuel. So you get the idea. Army Group Center's Panzers are very low on fuel. And that's really going to affect their ability to conduct offensive operations. Uh, so around Mogliev we are not going to do anything offensive we are going to wait on the infantry to catch up they've done an incredible job they have miles upon miles to march but we really need them to get up here to support and once they get in position they are they are uh, tremendous helping us uh, on the attack to to open up breaches in the Ru russians front so they are far from that, far from being in that position to do that. So it's this turn, it's mostly just waiting on the infantry and no attacking here. It, it really will do, operationally, it will do nothing for us to attack here because we won't achieve anything. We may be able to cause casualties, but it's just burning fuel, ammunition to really achieve nothing operationally that will help us. Um, in the next several turns so the best thing we can do is not expend fuel wait for the infantry to come up and be patient for better times and again army group center and army group north we're not going to win the war for us it's going to be army group south they're definitely going to support army group south indirectly so i'm not too um broken hearted that they haven't busted over the nepper and taken smolensk already so I'm going to see how it goes S on the southern uh, on an army group center's more southern sphere of operations. If we can get across the Nepper here, that would be great. Did recon, so this is a pretty good snapshot of what we're looking at for um, defense from the Soviets oh uh, it's it's not gonna be easy but if we can get at least a couple like 10 20 30 40 maybe maybe uh, it yeah I'm looking at it now we might be lucky to even get one hex over but if we can get at least two hexes uh, 20 miles of front on the east side of the Nepper a a um, bridgehead that would be great I'm not entertaining well I am you know maybe fantastically I'm entertaining the idea of historically replicate rep, replicating the encirclement that the Germans managed uh, around Kiev in the later parts of I think uh, I was just reading Army Group South it was like the first 
end of August, first week of September, when they actually closed the pocket, and they that was a, a massive encirclement combining Army Group Center and Army Group South to get together in a grand operational um, pincer movement. So I don't envision, I haven't set myself up to, to achieve that, but if opportunity presents itself, we may think about it. We may be able to, by, before winter sets in, take Gommel and get a bridgehead south and east over the Dnieper. It's only going to get tougher and more dense with Soviets, uh, Soviet defenses uh, as the weeks go on beef, uh, to the west of Smolensk and obviously throwing everything they can in front of us to protect Moscow. Army Group South, I was thinking about it. Nope, sorry about that. Let's come down here, click here. Okay. I am going to definitely refit some of these divisions. There's a couple that couple uh, Panzer divisions that have pretty decent fuel still, like the 11th Panzer division. Yes, uh, 11th Panzer, my favorite. Uh, so they have 80 percent and 60. Uh, they're going to refit, but um, the Viking has the fifth. Uh, what will be the 5th SS Panzer Division will be has 100% fuel, that's great, and then 99%. So we have at least a handful of Panzer Divisions and motorized divisions that can um, conduct some offensive operations for our primary objective for Army Group South is to take Cherkasi and, if possible, get a bridgehead over the Nepper in the Tricasi uh, um, area of operations. I'm thinking of doing that because I'm going to pull back the uh, 31st Panzer Corps to Zitomir, uh, reconstitute around Zitomir, have these, see that's 28 and 28 percent fuel yeah they're definitely going to refit pull back the 36th and the first divisions right around Zitomir I don't think you can refit once you move but they'll do limited movements and hopefully have better fuel situation for next turn by doing that I'm hoping to bait some of the Soviets to move west because uh, they did attack the first panzer division and maybe they felt good about that and they will come west which will draw them in a little bit so that if we get a bridgehead here we could do a limited encirclement around the Kiev area which will give time for the infantry to march all their their butts up to um, north of Kiev and west of Kiev and if we could get an encirclement of 20 to 30 uh, Soviet divisions, that would be great. But we'll see how that shapes up. It could turn out uh, there's completely different opportunities, but that's a tentative plan right now. So take Chikasi, get a bridgehead over to Chikasi, reconstitute, and potentially reconstitute and refit some of the divisions here and we'll we'll choose them as we move as we go along I don't have them identified now and the overall plan is to get as many infantry divisions east to help start helping support the offensives that the Panzers are going to be conducting in the next couple of weeks and that means the Romanians and the Hungarians and the Slovaks will going to have to contribute which you're going to start doing in the next couple of turns uh, the front will be established and that will take some pressure off uh, the Germans so the Hungarians are freed up now and I was just looking they can take some some of the heat off of sealing off the southern point uh, part um, southern perimeter of this pocket 
which I don't think there's going to be. We can very lightly defend it as these Soviets try to retreat and head east. Uh, that will free up. I'll try to be as economical as possible to hold the northern part of this forming pocket with German divisions and get them east as fast as possible. Oh boy. I should have been more diligent in taking these four Soviet formations out of the picture because they're they're holding up they're holding us up more than they should be right now and I have to get them off the rail lines so we gotta start repairing the rail lines to get rail uh, railheads as close to our headquarters as possible because that will improve our supply situation and I did some of that off camera It's pretty cool you can look here and you can see the rail uh, um, the status of the rail lines red is no go for the Germans green is good for the Germans uh, the fronts here so I manually use some of the railroad engineers to the repair the rail lines as I could and you can obviously we're uh, pretty far away from our lead elements and our headquarters of our lead elements so that's why we're running into these fuel shortages. The bottom line is we have a whole lot of rail lines to repair and that has to happen in order to improve our supply situation. So that is pretty cool, gives you a good idea, a good visual of where we're at. And we haven't really even started getting rail lines repaired in Army Group South, mainly because we are more uh, focused on a breakthrough and a breakout and because of that it's messy back here with not clearing out these Soviets here and getting them off the rail lines and in all fairness we only have I think we only have two of the railroad engineers that we can actually repair ourselves so there aren't as many autopilot ones as well so we're suffering a little worse than the other army groups for getting the rails repaired and that's about it I'm going to go off camera and start doing the more um, unglamorous moves just start heading east with the infantry and probably on cat on camera once I decide just who is going to take part in an attack in an attempt to get a bridgehead over here in the southern part of the Nepper Army Group Center and we'll pr try to get on camera the success or un unsuccessful attempt to take Chikasi and a bridgehead over the Nepper here all right did I miss anything else uh, I think that's about it and I will be right back shortly. And I'm back. So let's see where we're at. Army Group North was able to move my infantry as far as they could go while the 56 Panzer Corps was refitting. I have them on refit status. Just starting to close in on the Soviet defensive line. I believe all of this uh, part of the map and terrain is vacated. So we're going to take a few of these infantry divisions and move them up to Talonin. And hopefully have a line running from r roughly here down to the Pipus Lake and then start to make some attacks and take Piskov. But right now we're not in position to do that. We're just trying to catch up to the 56, 56 Panzer Corps. All right, so really nothing much happened. Army Group North. Army Group Center. We finished off the, the last 
think it was three formations of the Soviets. I think one. I this was the uh, infantry division that did all the work. It wasn't uh, too much effort. They all surrendered. So started to move all of the infantry that was back here. Uh, what we started to do last turn, uh, starting to move them east, we took everyone we could that was left around the uh, last part of the pocket and started to move them east. So let's move up close to Mogliev and see what's going on. Oh, this is an interesting part of the front. Because it's like the boundary between Army Group North and Army Group Center. And there's a whole lot of uh, terrible terrain to attack through in this area. Yet, we have, oh, let me say this right, Vitebsk that's sitting there that we ideally could take, but it's such such defensible terrain and they're already massing uh, forces around Vitebsk uh, so we're gonna see what we can do um, taking Vitebsk and the Germans that are gonna do that are these infantry divisions right here they got a ways to go and yeah it's it's what to do up here. Are we just going to hold or are we going to try to maybe break through this little land bridge between the dog of a river and the Nepper and, and bust out through here? But I don't think that's going to be the plan. We'll see how things shape up once the infantry makes it up into contact with the Russian defensive line. I decided to not make any attacks over the Nepper. Just didn't have the combat power to do it. It was just a handful of Panzer divisions that were extremely low on fuel and unsupported. So the best course of action, I thought, was to start refitting them, pull them off the line, because the infantry made really good progress. And they're almost right up to the Nepper here. And next turn, these cores here and these infantry here will be able to relieve the 39th Panzer Corps out of Mogliev. So I'll pull out 39th and start to refit them as the infantry comes up. And it looks like it's going to be more of a deliberate crossing of the Nepper, deliberate attacks and some some consideration done rather than awkwardly trying to make tiny gains over the Nepper without much support. So that's that's how I looked at it. You could say that it was maybe being a little cautious, but <laughs> when I tried to see what an attack would look like, I didn't even have the option to attack some of these Soviets across the river and the most I could accomplish was a hasty so one Panzer division doing a hasty across a major river against a dug-in uh, Soviet infantry division didn't I didn't like how that was gonna play out so I didn't even try alright so most of my Panzers will be refitting resupplying on fuel and ammo well ammo's pretty good Re resupplying on fuel and armaments uh, so they'll get some vehicles back and that's just going to increase their combat power and some men back so we'll see how successful that refit is because I really couldn't do anything across here that would make any sense operationally or strategically at this point all right so, a whole lot of moving in Army Group Center. No attacks. Refitting. Let's move down to Army Group South. Same exact thing. A whole lot of movement. 
going as fast as we can, as far as we can, east with our infantry to catch up to the Panzers, which had reached their objectives. Was it a turn? I think it was just a turn, turn ago. Um, and they're kind of uh, on standby right now uh, to do anything uh, significant on, on the front. So I'm going to uh, start selecting candidates for refit. But I'll get back to that. Let's just finish up here, show you what's going on with what's going to be a pocket of Soviets here, an encirclement. And what I tried to do is take as much of the burden off of destroying these Soviets in this encirclement uh, from the Germans and giving the ownership of that task to the Hungarians and the Romanians. The Hungarians, which have freed up, uh, surprisingly had um, a lot of um, a lot of capability to to get far into uh, across the border because the the motorized here and the mountain and the cavalry of the Hungarian mobile mobile Hungarian corps made great progress. So they are going to take up the southern part of the perimeter on the encirclement. A couple security divisions, the Slovaks, and just one German infantry corps will finish off these Soviet forces. So not tying up too much because we still have Romanians to start uh, taking ownership of the southern flank of Army Group South. So that's how that all panned out. I don't know how these Soviets are still <laughs> such good supply. They, they, they're... Do they have supply back? Yeah, I guess they do. But what's puzzling me is why these seem to be in such good status. Because they've been isolated f for a while now, a couple turns. Apologies for that. Um, so yeah, we're just going to next turn start making small attacks because uh, they, they still look pretty strong and most of these are yeah, I think yeah, they're in forts. Fort 1. Yeah, they're all in forts along the border. So it makes it tough. They're still supplied. But we're not going to worry too much about them. What really is really a burr in my saddle are these four stupid Soviet formations still. <laughs> I attacked the 215th motorized division. They, These guys, these motorized, these Soviet motorized divisions defend so well. It's crazy. I, I think I attacked them, this division, about three or four times. And it just simply held once and then retreated twice. Uh, yeah. And I did deliberate. I think I've been saying de dedicated <laughs> attacks. I believe they're, the correct word in the rules is a deliberate attack. So I did... I don't know how many deliberate attacks against these two divisions and they continue to hold out against all odds which is really annoying maybe I should have given them more respect and gotten rid of them because they're tying up the rail line and one two three four four of our infantry divisions so it's it's a pain in the butt could have done that differently but hey kudos to them for holding out the swamp walkers are slowly making their way through the pripet just to get ownership of hexes and control not much to talk about there and strung out we're marching 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 into the endless steps trying to catch up to the panzers Alright, so, what of his interest? 
this turn. I haven't done anything up here yet, but I wanted to show you what's happening here. So the divisions here, there were there were a handful that had pretty good supply. They were in pretty good state supply-wise with fuel. Those were the LAH, SS Motorized Division, and the first, which will be the first SS Panzer Division at one point, and then the fifth SS Panzer Division at one point in the war. They were able to route one division and they moved adjacent to an unknown counter with a question mark and that disappeared. They were able to get to Chikasi and I wanted to show you that we are able to make a bridgehead over the Nepper at Chikasi. So my suspicions are although immense in its ability to field formations and its manpower pools, the Soviets are ushering most of their forces to defend Leningrad, Vitebsk, Smolensk, and obviously Moscow. And the lines, the forces are starting to thin in the south, is which exactly what I had hoped um, that would happen with the extra three Panzer Corps we had. So in the next couple of turns, I'm hoping something good can happen, but it's all going to be dictated on fuel. Yeah. Because I have two options as I'm seeing it that, may, that are kind of shaping up operationally. We could go north. We, we still have to move some... Uh, i got to form a little corridor so that at least no one's cut off. And I don't intend to go too far, um, too many miles past the bridgehead. We could go north and cut off and try to encircle these Soviets. That's That's... That probably won't happen because they got a perfect exfil route right here. It's hard to cut them off from the Pripyat, and they'll just trickle out here and mass around Chernigov. And I don't have the forces to punch through over the Nepper, come and take Gommel, fight over the Nepper here. This is that a, yeah, that's a little minor branch before it becomes a. A minor river, it looks like. Fight through the swamp. And then link up with Army Group South. Very much like the Germans were able to do historically. Uh, it could be just more of a localize as the infantry catches up. And we shift some uh, Panzer Corps or two around here. And then just try to get across here and get a smaller pocket without involving Army Group Center. The other th thought that crossed my mind is we could get across the Nepper because we definitely want that bridgehead for future ops. But we could start to establish a front, hold the flank here, and press on and push them back once the infantry catches up, push back towards Kiev, and shoot out of a cannon some Panzer Corps, right? That's wishful thinking due to the fuel. And rush to the Crimea or Nikolaev as a, a landmark or even Zaspora, Zaporol, oh boy, uh, Zaporozhye. Jeez, I don't, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Um, this city just thinking of landmass, kind of, kind of thinking out loud. Basically, make a move, cut off the Crimea from these forces retreating uh, in through the Crimea and out, and make a encirclement with 
instead of using forces to encircle on one um, on one side of the pocket it will just be the sea and the terrain that will form a pocket for them uh, making no option for them to escape just thinking about it it's a long way to go a lot of fuel but it's an option and I don't know how many uh, Soviets would actually be able to encircle because I did an air recon and this is all it's showing right now and the air recon was pretty accurate because I was expecting we didn't account for some Soviets that didn't show up on the air recon and were you know unaccounted for and they they would show up as we moved closer and adjacent not the case so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little optimistic that we can do something uh, on the west side of the Don uh, Nepper Bend here Nepper Basin industrial region gonna have to see how it uh, how it plays out so I just wanted to show you that uh, so I got to do some rearranging here I don't want to take up too much camera time with me thinking on this uh, yeah this could be the beginnings of a larger operational plan but I think if I just make a quarter here a little breakthrough in the front and a bridgehead it will position me to either go north or south looking for an encirclement or um, place myself in a strategic advantage for 1942 and prepare me for the the winter here yeah all right so I'm just gonna do that it's not gonna be major attacks I'm not gonna attack any of these Soviets and I'm not gonna attack down it's just gonna be foreign forming a corridor I just wanted to show you that and, and and some of the thoughts that are starting to come to mind seeing that I was able to get Cherkassi uh, relatively easy yeah I'm not gonna throw anyone too many f divisions over maybe just two or three oh, that's just gonna put us in a poor fuel position next turn yeah just thinking okay I'm just going to to pause the video uh, do some more thinking and a, a couple more moves and I'll, I'll get back to you